Sunday, June 4th, 2023. I fed all the street cats today, just like I have been every day for four years. There weren't any neighbors down there today at 3 a.m. like there usually have been. And I went and I went down for the second feeding at 6 a.m. It looked like most of the neighbors have stopped scaring the cats, but someone is still apparently scaring them. All the little buggers were fed and accounted for, and that's the most important thing. I brought eight cans of tuna, eight cans of pate, and more dry food than I have brought in a while. I brought so much tuna because I'm running low on, on canned food. The internet was about to be shut off again, but a lovely brain surgeon in New York City, a Hawaiian, sent a gracious donation. When I went out for my second feeding, when the sun came up, I fed the parking lot crew their Sunday brunch, and when I went to go feed PK, I heard some kittens crying. And I went to go investigate, and I found the cutest little black and white ball of fluff crying for help. A mother cat who looked almost identical to this kitten had been hit by a car on Dillingham the night before. And I suppose maybe that was the kitten's mother out looking for food, and the kitten's mother never made it back home. The kittens were hiding under an electric gen generator on the opposite side of a 10-foot-tall spiked fence on a storage unit area. I was on the opposite side of the fence on the grass and the kitten was over trying to get to me, but we were separated by this fence. I threw some pate over the fence and it actually landed right on top of the kitten, but the kitten was too young for regular food. It was crying for its mother. It's crying for milk. And I was on the grassy side. I figured if I could somehow jump over to where the kitten was, I could toss the kitten over the 12 foot fence and jump back over and retrieve it. So I climbed up and stood on, on top of the 12 foot spikes. But then when I jumped down to have a soft landing onto the other side, the spikes caught my shorts and ripped them and gave me a big long rip scratch on my back of my thigh. It ripped off my shorts. I was basically walking around in my brief underwears. But I stood there, pantsless, and the kitten was scared. He's like, what the hell? You just jumped over and ripped your pants off. And the kitten r ran a little bit and wouldn't come to me. And I didn't want to go further into the storage area, which I wasn't supposed to be. There were security cameras right on me. So I took out my camera so I could see how long I was there. I wasn't going to be longer than three minutes. And I filmed the kitten and tried to get the kitten to come to me, but he wouldn't come to me. I was in a highly restricted area, so I had to get out. But when I tried to, to scale the fence back, it looked like they had planned that because there was almost no way to get back, nothing to grab onto. But somehow I used the wall, the each side of the walls, like I've seen in the movies, scaled up the side, got on top of the spiked fence, and then jumped the 12 feet into the grass. I, my my original goal was to go back and try to get the kitten again. I'll make another effort tomorrow. Um, but this is a hard racket, you know, this street cat cat business. It's oh not God, for uh, the weak a heart or the physically weak. You have to be a strong person emotionally, physically, and mentally to do this. Um, but the, the gratefulness that these cats receive in an otherwise bleak existence uh, makes it all worth the while. Thank you for listening. My name is Gregory Brandt, a.k.a. Mr. G. Aloha.